Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Now we are in chapter number five and we are going to talk about animation. Now remember this is from a series of movies that we have in our YouTube channel and also you can find them in our website. But um, yeah, uh, I mean in case you are coming here for the first time you can go and check them all out and um, keep uh, the track of this uh, series. So now let's talk about um, animation. All right. What is animation? Animation is just the you know the process of uh, uh, create motion. And how do we do that? Well, we have to take sequence of images uh, or images uh, with that with different settings. And then if we take all these images with different settings, for example, okay, let me just um, change this to uh, input, for example, so that we have only 38 frames. And you know what? I actually think that I have another uh, object we used in one of our classes. So I'm just going to go here to, I think it's images. Uh, let me look here and add my folders. I think it's this one called render. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this folder called render. And I'm going to drag this folder. And now that's another thing that I didn't show you before. If you bring the entire folder, you can actually bring the entire uh, sequence of images all in, in once. And so I'm going to select this one because uh, I have numbers here and I think that that will help. That's going to help a little bit. And remember, I'm, I'm thinking uh, this program or this uh, series of movies are for people that uh, is coming to uh, use this, uh, this tool for the first time. So probably you know uh, a lot about animation, but still we're going to start by uh, talking about this. So. I have this frame, okay? This is one image. And I can show you that right here inside my render. I have this frame. So now this frame is uh, one object. But then if I switch to frame number two, you can see that I have something that looks like animation. An animation. I change, I have an animated number. It goes from one, changes to two. Now this, that's the same thing that is happening here inside New York. I can go here from one, two, or even three, four, et cetera, et cetera. All these symbols are encrypted, well, are inside this image. It's not something that Nuke is going to give you. Actually, Nuke is going to show you that here also in frames. Zero, 01 is actually the same thing, but with these numbers, you know, you can uh, see it better. So that's the thing. If you go to frame number 10, something completely different is happening. And then if I go to frame 30, something completely different is happening. So what we're doing is if I take this and I go moving like this, you can see that this guy, in this case Rodrigo, which is my friend, and uh, he was uh, playing here in, in this video, it looks like he's moving, okay? But actually he's not moving. I mean, they are all just a bunch of still images. So all this is giving me the sensation of movement because that's what we can do with these applications. We can create the sensation of movement. And that's what is happening. So now all the animation that we, uh, if we want to create animation here, we need to make sure that we understand this concept of moving numbers. So if I want to have something happening in frame number one, and then all of a sudden I wanted to uh, do something different at frame 20, I have to specify that. Now the advantage of uh, dealing with is animation in, in, in the digital world is that now we have the ability to only animate a few parameters and then all the, the, the parameters that are in between those two are going to be calculated by the application. And I know probably right at this point it's not making uh, a lot of sense, but all right, let me just take one more time our merge. I'm going to press one so I can connect that again to this, in, in, in this area. And we have a transform object, right? So why don't we animate this transform? What I'm going to do first is I'm, I'm going to press O one more time so that I can see my gizmo, this little guy here. And remember, we changed the, the value here to zero. So that's why we are in this uh, corner because our coordinates, right? We are at zero. So I'm going to double click on my transform and then I'm going to go here. Uh, you know what? I'm going to delete this one and I'm just going to call another one. So it's going to save us a little bit of time. And remember, if uh, I don't need to do that, I can press only T once and there we go. We have our transform. So I'm going to connect that right here. And that way it's exactly at the center of our uh, viewport. Now, another thing that we could do is actually, you know what? I can even do all that keep my transform, take it, 
and oh but it doesn't matter because you know what we don't have any any sort of uh, tracking right now but well I can connect that right here to his uh, head and then I can call another transform alright so that's something that I want to show you. you can call another one and place it on top of that one and now this is the one that we are going to be animated not this one this one is the one that we used to just position it right here so um, now what I can do is actually take this and as you can see I am moving now two different objects I am moving the transform number one and then I am moving the transform number two so the point is that uh, I'm using the transform number one just to change the size of this fire object and then we're gonna use this one in order to move it alright so now let's uh, start uh, animating this at frame number one his head is right here but if he moves to frame number 10 you can see that now his head is all uh, it's it's not in the same place so we need to make this fire object um, follow his head so what I will do is go first to my frame number one for example I'm gonna double click on my transform and then here in the translate you have uh, one option here you can click and then if you click in this kind of uh, curve that you have there you can have this menu now what I will do is set a key I just click here and now you can see that all these values are in blue and I have this blue area in this region which is uh, telling me that I have a keyframe now what I can do is uh, drag and let's say that we want to move that to frame number 10 so I will take this gizmo and I will move that to frame number 10 for example and now automatically I have another keyframe right here you can see that Nuke is intelligent enough to know that I am moving that because I want to create some uh, sort of animation so I have now frame number 10 I can rewind this and now I can hit play and it's moving along with this uh, with this guy now the thing here is that at frame number 10 he's not stopping he keeps moving and then he's going up to frame 20 and now he's on, on this other area so what I can do is now change this and place it right here and now you can see that we have a curve here and with this curve we have three different points these points are representing the three different keyframes that we have right now this is one way of looking at our keyframes inside our viewport inside inside our image and then we have another option um, and we can look at them right here in our e input area in our uh, timeline so that's cool now we can go back here and actually I can press F so I can frame this in my viewport and then I can press rewind and hit play and now you can see how this object is kind of following his head it's not perfect because we are not um, this is not the, the purpose right now I'm not looking for perfection I'm looking for you know I want to teach you how to use the tools and that's it so then we can go here to 30 for example and this is not uh, you know it's not moving a lot and then 38 he's coming back uh, at this uh, this time so we will go like that and you can see how this pad is following that and we have hit play and it's kind of following him now there is uh, in some areas that's why you have this timeline and, and this orange guy where you can take it and you can drag it to find the areas where things are not kind of matching so I can come here and I can create another one just by moving this and automatically Nuke is going to be creating more and more objects for me now if you find that uh, things are getting out of control you know you can always come and try to change the, these values one by one and then we will start with the process of you know doing everything by hand and rotoscoping and all these type of things that make uh, compositors suffer um, and, and actually a lot of people like uh, rotoscoping a lot of people like to do all this type of uh, work like this in my case I prefer uh, well I, I don't think um, nobody likes to do these kind of things like that we will use the tracker but what I mean is like there's a lot of uh, times when you have to stay point by point doing uh, tweaks by hand and there's a lot of people that enjoy that, that that portion in my case I don't I really like uh, to do things quick and if I have a tool that allows me to uh, follow this guy for example quick uh, I will use that and that's our, our tracker now 
and uh, this is how we can actually move and animate uh, if you want to remove some animation frames from here you can actually click again in this area select the key, the keyframe that you want and then just go here to delete key and that will get rid of that uh, option so delete key and delete key just like that now another thing you can do is actually click here and you can go and say you know what I don't want animation anymore so I just click in no animation and it's gonna new it's gonna ask you are you sure you don't want animation yes I'm sure thank you very much now we don't have animation it's gone and our our fields are now uh, empty okay so now we can do all sort of things now but th there's something else that we can do for example I can bring another object or probably if uh, I don't know let me see if we have something here that we can use for example let me bring a color color wheel um, what I can do here is I'm gonna need to call another marriage node for example we will take this one in here and now I can connect actually the well I can bring that one here so that it's easier to understand so I'm bringing another merge and now what I want is to merge this wheel with this other merge and now we connect that so now we have different objects right now what I can do is uh, call another transform so I just press T I'm gonna connect that right here and I'm gonna scale this object which is not this one but this so which means it's this one in the center right so I'm gonna make it smaller and I'm gonna place it right here and now other thing that I can do is oh I forget uh, you know what I don't want to remove my animation the animation that we had so let me keep that animation we have all this and just if you press ctrl Y you can redo and if you press ctrl C you can undo so I want to keep this uh, this animation right because I want to use it with the other object that I was going to show you so excuse me uh, we will go here to uh, the first option here we're gonna call our color wheel one more time and then I will call a transform tool well, it's just the tip that I have every time to press tab so we have the transform here and then we will call a merge again merge come on give me my merge there we go so a goes here and then we will get that remove this one connect this one right here and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make it smaller we don't want uh, that big object right there and actually I can leave it there if I want to all I want to know all I want to do is just uh, you know I want to go here to transform one I want to make it visible here then, excuse me transform 2 is the one with animation and actually something that I forgot to tell you is that if you see that letter A here that means that we have animation in this node so now let me take uh, transform number 3 and now if I double click on transform number 3 I'm gonna have these options here but here but the last one was transform number 2 so actually just goes down uh, to this area now what you can do is take this for example you click on this uh, a kind of uh, curve you can click and then you can drag it for example and if I drag it and I release right here in the transform you can see that actually something happened I moved these parameters which means 4, 4 5 3 is right now here 47 is right here and now I changed the, the the move of this uh, I move this object the circle move to the exact position of uh, that object so that's cool now another thing they can do is obviously we go back to frame number one and now if I do that again I'm just gonna change the position and it's going back to zero it's not going to the exact position of this object because remember we have two transformations and also the size of this image is uh, images are not the same but um, that's what, I, what we're doing now another thing is that I can actually control click and drag okay pressing control then I click on this the same curve and I drag and release it on top of this object and now what I will do is create a relationship which is actually kind of a, an expression where I'm telling a uh, nuke okay whatever this transform number two is gonna do please you you have to do the same thing so right now we have four four twelve twelve you can see that the color is kind of blue but it's in a lower low, uh, co uh, it's not that bluish and uh, that means that we have a relationship and this is the father and this is gonna be the son 
so on. Now another thing is that you can see here in your view and in your graph and uh, not graph that transform two is connected to transform three, and now the color wheel is going to be doing whatever the transform two is uh, is doing. Now let's see. I'm going to press all so that I I don't I don't want to see all the the overlays in in here. And if I move now, remember I didn't do anything uh, to this color wheel. I didn't animate anything. I'm just going to press play. And there you go. As you can see, they both are moving with the same uh, kind of uh, behavior. They are sharing the same uh, objects. Obviously, I, I have an offset of uh, where these objects are located, but that's what I wanted to show you. I just wanted you to know that that's what is going to happen. Okay, and at this point you have an idea of how you can create your keyframes, how you can uh, remove keyframes, how you can translate information or of animation from one object to another. A lot of information in this uh, class, but now let's go to our curve editor because actually we can even uh, come in and tweak the every single keyframe inside this node graph, inside this curve editor, excuse me. So for example, I can go here to the transform number two, and if I select, for example, the X uh, axis, well, the, the, the X uh, option here, I will get access to this curve, and I can see all these little dots that I have here, they actually represent uh, keyframes. So every point here, as you can see in number 10, I have a point right there, that's the one that I can see right here. If I go to number 20, I will get that in number 20. And now, if you want to move here, you got to do the same thing. Press Alt, and then you can. You're gonna be able to move inside here. And then I can go to 18. There's another one. Then there's another one here at frame 15. So all these points are keyframes. Now, if I go to Transform 3 and I press in the Translate X, you can see that I have the same shape, right? same shape but without the points and that is because remember transform tree is just using the reference of transform number two and it actually it doesn't have uh, keyframes the circle doesn't have keyframes it's just following whatever the fire is doing that's what is uh, this one is doing so that's why we don't have uh, access to, uh, to keyframes there now if you want to trigger keyframes you can actually come here select them all you can grab them and you can move them anywhere you want. You can grab them all by uh, like this um, one in once. Then you can t you can take this and you can modify your tangents, your curves, and that's uh, that has to do with interpolation and, and things like that. And I mean, it's not that complex, but still, we need uh, our own time. And this um, uh, the, the curve editor needs uh, his its own uh, time to talk about it because. Um, it looks simple, you know, and it's not that complex, but still, we need to uh, tweak some of these parameters. You need to know what, uh, why you want to tweak them and, and so on. So for now, I think you have enough information to start uh, using Nuke and, you know, start uh, creating your own animations and things like that. And I, I think uh, this is the end of this movie. So thank you very much for watching. I will see you in our next uh, chapter. And remember to subscribe and remember to click on the I like button or actually no, it's not I like but you know you know what I mean like like the video and go and check our website if you want to really master Nuke we have a complete training I mean I'm not joking we have the most complete training uh, available out there okay so thank you very much I will see you later bye bye for now